Okay, we're going to do a show through walk around video on a 2008 Monaco Dynasty. I'm going to go around the outside, show you all the features out here, then we'll go inside, open it up, and show you the stuff inside. As you can see, the cargo lights are on, all your doors are open, and you have extra carpeting and tile and an awning wand and stuff in there. There's a switch right here to put the, it's an electric slide. So out or in. And we do the same thing on the other side. Next compartment is just straight storage. Again, all of these cargo lights, the switches are inside the door. Let's turn them all on. Center of the coach here is your fuel tank, your aqua hot reservoir antifreeze. You can see the back of your LP tank. And there is an on off valve here that's capped off. If you wanted to add a grill or something outside, it's a good place to plumb it in. Next compartment, storage, all the way across. The little sliding doors are to access the aqua hot for service. And up here is your inverter auto gen start system controller. Next compartment back is the back side of your aqua hot. You have your aqua hot panel, control panel. Up in here, you can just see that box with the rotary switch. That is for your bay heat. That sets your bay heat temperature. Down here is your water tank and your drain and your bay heater. Next compartment is the storage compartment. And your house or engine batteries, excuse me, are out here. They're on a slide tray and they are brand new. Back here is your rear engine compartment. You have your antifreeze reservoir. That big filter is for your power steering. You got a fuel filter there. Your belts, your engine oil dipstick, engine oil fill, all there. There is a plug there so you can plug in the block heater if you want. Behind that panel is all your fuses and chassis solenoids and relays. And then power steering reservoir there with a cap and a dipstick. Two inch receiver. This little plug right here is for an Air Force One for trailer braking. And then you also have a standard seven way trailer plug. I have to excuse the clutter, we're real busy. You'll also notice it has not been through detail yet. Your side radiator system here. Coming forward, exhaust for your aqua hot. That little compartment door is a storage for a sewer hose. Down here is your water hose. It's on a hose reel. Your 110 50 amp power is also on a power cord reel. You have a monitor. Tank monitors out here, so you can check LP, fresh tank, black tank, gray tank. This is your Santa flush, which is either black or gray, depending on this valve. Black tank is where it's currently at. Flip it this way, and it's gray tank. Autofill. You flip that to autofill. When your fresh water tank is low and you're hooked up to water, it will top off your fresh water tank. And you got a water pump switch. You got your hose reel for the hose and your power cord reel for the power cord and your SantaCon for your SantaCon system. Your black valve is the rear valve here and your gray tank valve is the front valve right there. Your SantaCon can be disconnected and you can use a standard sewer hose. 
This is your SantaCon hose and the hookup. It has a four inch hookup. If you need to, you can buy a three inch sewer cap, punch a hole in it and use that as well. This is your outside water, hot and cold, we'll swing out spout. Got a paper towel holder up here. Also up here at the top, 110 outlet. Your gravity fill, if you wanted to fill your freshwater tank by just putting a hose in it, you can. Your cable hookup and your telephone hookup. It still has the old style telephone. This switch here is your house battery disconnect switch. Behind this door, we turn this part away, swing that out. And back here, you can see your two water filter housings. So you have sediment filter and a final filter. The water filter wrench is down there. Your plumbing down there has valves, so you can flip the valves and hook a hose up to winterize, and then you have a monoblock so that all your hot water is broke down individually, and all your cold water is broke down individually, and you can turn any one of them off with that red handle T wrench up there that operates the valves. Next compartment forward is our house batteries. They are brand new. They were installed this morning. So your old batteries are actually sitting here on a pallet next to me. We'll go into this part of the clutter, but we're busy. So I apologize for that. But again, we got four brand new L16 house batteries. Coming forward, just like on the other side, mid-mounted is our fuel tank. Has a fuel fill on either side. There is a hatch that you can open just to fill or you can open the whole door. Your LP tank fill. Back there is your uh, fixed liquid level. Uh, they also call it an outage valve, and some people just call it a tank valve, but it is fixed liquid level gauge. That is your gas out, and then your regulator. So turn it all the way on till it stops, turn it all the way off till it stops, no in between. Next up is our straight storage compartment. And coming forward to our next compartment. This has got the slide tray in it. It also has an air hose connection, so you can air up a tire or whatever. Keep in mind the engine has to be running. Our starter kit's in here. Our 50 to 30 adapter. Put the starter kit over. And in the starter kit, we have a standard sewer hose, toilet tank chemical, toilet paper, a 110 adapter that goes on the other adapter, a water pressure regulator, and a drinking water safe hose. Up front, under the driver's window, is another fuse compartment. One thing that's nice Monaco has done, and that is, if you need to find a relay, it tells you where they're all at. It tells you where all your components are, where your hidden fuses are, okay? So there are fuses that you normally would have to look for. They're all labeled as to where they're at. Components that you don't know where they're at are labeled. All of these fuses have LEDs. So when you turn the ignition on, it fires this whole system up, and every fuse has a red LED to tell you that it's good. This is your smart wheel controller. We'll go to the smart wheel when we go inside. This is a little light. It's kind of cute. Flip the switch. It also has a lever. If you flip this lever down, you can pull it out and use it like a little flashlight. There's a crank handle up here. And you crank it back in. And then close the lever. And then the switch is right here. Generator slide in and out. Currently out. On in. 10,000 watt quiet diesel. You have a circuit breaker. The breaker has to be on. The generator will run with the breaker off, but it won't produce any power. Start and stop. Start is also preheat. Stop is also prime. 
So to stop, you hit it and let go. To prime it, you hold it continuously. And it fire, and after 20 seconds or so, it turns on the fuel pump and it primes the generator. To start it, you press start with this preheat. And it won't crank until it's ready. Now there is your enter or windshield washer solvent. Brake switches and relays. Your AC. And to put the generator in, you just push in on the box button here. And it comes in. Put it out, you press out. Okay. Now, let me put it. This is your main awning remote. Retract, stop, and extend. Press retract and hold it for about three seconds, and then it will auto retract. If you just bump it, it'll bump in while you're holding the button, but you have to hold it for about three seconds for it to come all the way in. The overhead, over the door awning, has a switch above and behind the driver's seat to put that back in. Keyless entry. I didn't set a code in it yet. It's fairly simple to set. So I don't know what you want for a code. You got four numbers and it's a five digit code. So what I'm gonna set right now Okay, four three two one four is currently the code. So to lock the coach, we press the one two button and hold it, and it just locked all the compartment doors. Can't lock the entrance door because it's open. Four three two one four, hit the two, and it unlocks the compartment doors. Hit the one, and it unlocks the entrance door. Okay. And then you have a doorbell. Okay. Just so the neighbor kids can bug you. All right. When we get into the entrance way here. We have a battery disconnect switch. And we have our bay lights. And we have our step switch. In one position, the step goes out and stays out. The other position, it goes in and out every time you open or close the door. Porch light, which was on. And ceiling lights, which are up there. Hmm. Doorbell's ringing. Okay, well, I'll file that under my bed. The doorbell does not work correctly. Above the entrance door, we have our inverter controller. Okay, and turn the inverter on, turn the inverter off. Because you have a household refrigerator, we tell people to leave the inverter on when you're using the coach and turn it off. That way, if you lose power, it switches to inverter automatically. Shore power is currently set at 30 amps. If you hook up to a lower power, like using the power adapters, you can go down as low as 5 amps. And then press the button. What that does is tells the inverter you're not going to allow it to use that much power. 
Don't go above 30 amps because 30 amps is the incoming breaker that feeds it. Your AGS button turns on your auto gen start. And then you rotate the knob, press the button, rotate the knob for enable, test, enable with quiet time, or off. Rotate the knob for AGS status, tells it it's off. And then you can set your, by rotating the knob, you can go into your start times and all of that in the panel. The meter switch right here. Brings us to meter mode. Also brings up the ability to go to different meters. Setup you should not have to mess with and tech is for technicians. Okay, well, that's pretty much basically all you're gonna do is use the charge and the charge button. You can turn the charger off, turn the charger on. The inverter button, you can turn the inverter off, you can turn the inverter on, and you might use the shore power once in a while. TV antenna, up top. The antenna switch down here turn power on if you want to raise the antenna press the button and it will raise and the raised light comes on you can rotate it left or right to get better signal to put it away press the button And it puts itself away. The stowed light comes on. Just like in your freshwater area, you have a monitor connection here. You have a KVH antenna panel. There is no KVH antenna hooked to it. It's just the previous someone had a KVH in here years ago. And they never took it out because it would have left a hole. Amp meter. Solar monitor for your solar charge panels. You do have solar panels on the roof. Surge guard is an inline surge protector. And again, that's your antenna connection up there. Front cabinet is all your owner's manuals and boxes. Directly above the passenger seat is your front DVD player. There's also satellite wiring and remotes up there. If you do decide to do a satellite, some of the wiring is still on the roof. But you'd have to purchase an antenna to get it done. Above the passenger seat is a switch panel. Passenger slide out in, passenger slide out out. Driver slide out out, driver slide out in. They're labeled, rope lights, all that, and master off to turn the lights off. There's a nearly identical copy of that light switch above the driver's seat. And then your door awning is here. Press it to put the on and press it and hold it to put the awning out. Press it and hold it to put it in. The all awnings up and down do not apply because we don't have those window power window awnings. Couch makes into a bed. To hide a bed. Your dining room table, second couch, cabinets above, light switches. For your dinette lights and your overhead. Main TV down here is a Blu ray player and a standard DVD and home theater system and remotes and your TV. Storage area above the television. More light switches above the sink. Okay. Above that switch panel, there's a four button switch for your aqua hot. You have 110 aqua hot and diesel aqua hot. And then high and low controls your fans for this heating zone on the aqua hot. And you have your sink, storage under the sink, more storage under the sink. 
the drawer. This drawer, sorry, has a lock. Little countertop extension. Cooktop. Push it down, turn it to the light position, let the burner light. Continue to hold down for a few seconds, then let go of it, and then you can adjust the burner. Same thing on the other one. Turn it to the light position, hold it down, let it light, let it burn for a few seconds, let go of it, stays lit. You can turn the sparker off. Convection microwave. Fantastic vent switch. Your fantastic vent is right here. Your controller's here. Turn it on. And it puts the vent lid up. It has a rain sensor indicator, which means that if it gets wet, it closes automatically. There's a switch that allows you to disable that. People wonder why you would want to disable that. I can tell you why. That rain sensor is so sensitive that if you have a heavy dew on the rain sensor, it will close your vents. If a bird spits on it, it'll close the vents. This is your freezer. Controls. Ice and water in the door. Refrigerator. And your controls up here. Again, it has not been cleaned yet. I apologize for that. Nice thing, these shelves are adjustable. And then it has a little strap, travel latch the previous owner put on here. And normally this is stuff that I remove during preps. However, I didn't want to leave holes in there and it does work, so we left it. <clears throat> you have storage under the stove there's some extra microwave stands and that's a pull-out drawer you'll notice these cabinets most of them have light switches in the cabinet so the light turns on automatically next to the refrigerator we've got storage all the way down and we have another storage to the right with adjustable shelves in it Heating and cooling. Thermostats right here. Turn it on. Pick your zone. Zone 4 is flashing. There's zone 1. It's flashing and it's in cool. And it's in auto cool. Hit the mode button. It's heat pump. Furnace. Off. Fan only. And cool. Zone 2, same basic thing. You just go hit the zone and hit the modes. <coughs> the only thing you cannot do is you can't have one zone cooling and the other zone heating. Pocket door. Has a little latch at the bottom. Privacy in the bathroom and the rear bedroom. Again, a little row of storage areas. Shower, medicine cabinet, bathroom sink and storage, light switches. And another fantastic vent controller for the vent in here. And then in your bath, toilet room, we have our toilet, storage above, toilet flush is right here. Add water, flush. Drawers, medicine cabinet, 
light switches, another fantastic fan switch, sink, pocket door going into the bedroom, your bed, a little monitor so you can check, watch your cameras. One thing about this, when you're laying in bed, and this is applies up in front, there's a rotary switch right here. That switch controls what camera we look at. There's our left camera, our right camera, inside camera, and rear camera. And then you've got generator start and stop, inverter on and off, lock and unlock so you can lock your doors from the bedroom, master off, bed overhead, docking lights. So if you're looking outside, you can turn the outside docking lights on from back here. This white switch turns on your ceiling fan. Up is high, down is low. Storage all the way across under the windows. TV. Below the TV. There's another DVD player, HDMI cable, and wiring for satellite receiver back here. And you have drawers. All the way across. Rear closet. It's kind of tough to open. It's got a good positive latch. So you give it a pull, slide it across. You have spare chairs, your folding chairs there. That is a handle that you can open the awning manually with. And behind here is all of our multiplex controllers and fuses for inside the coach. And pretty much everything is well labeled. So it's not too hard to figure things out in here. Again, pretty nice setup. Back there, Velcroed up against the wall. There's a table extension that opens the table out further so you can use the extra chairs. Under the bed, you get some storage. Got vacuum cleaner hoses and front windshield cover, it looks like. Under the bathroom sink. That's where you plug the vacuum cleaner hoses in. To close this down, we need to make sure we swing this sideways. So it takes two hands. Okay, controller for the sleep number bed. Pick the left side, turn it up, let it inflate. I don't know if you can hear it, but the pump is running. And it does take a little bit of time to fill it up. Right side. Left side. Of course, you can't tell that by the video, but I have my leg leaned up against the bed mattress and I can actually feel it firming up as it inflates. So 
So anyhow, that's the mattress controller. Pocket door, same as the other one, has a latch at the bottom. Across from the refrigerator on the driver's side is your washer and dryer. And there's a pull-out pantry. And the drawer opens to the under the entertainment center, which gives you the additional pantry space. And there is storage above the TVs. I think I showed you that already. Above the dinette. The booth does not make into a bed. There's a little storage cabinet under it. Now one thing you will find when you put the slide out, out on the driver's side, it will automatically put the driver's seat forward all the way. So if your driver's seat is back and you put the slide out in or out, it will run the driver's seat forward. You have a little map right here. Put on off switch on the, that's on a little stock. Your leveling is right here. Ignition has to be on. You got manual, auto, and travel mode. Power your parking brake. Push in here. Ceiling lights right above the driver. Pedal in and out with the ignition on. You can move your pedals in and out. Engine brake on and off, and then high or low here. Driver shade. Passenger shade. The passenger has a shade switch over there so they can object that or control that. All right. Mirror selector. Right, or excuse me, right or left. In the middle is off. And then up, down, right, and left. Here's another trick, though. This switch here, all the way down is bottom mirror, middle is middle mirror, top is top mirror. So you can adjust all three mirrors over there. Mirror heat right here. Just like in the bedroom, we have a camera controller that controls our camera. So I can switch from camera to camera and see what I want. And then transmission shift controller. Up across the front, we have block heat. We have aqua hot engine preheat. When your aqua hot is running, and you're parked, you can preheat your engine by flipping on the engine preheat switch. Do not have that on while you're driving. Battery boost hooks all your batteries together to get you more starting power. Step cover, just like on the passenger side, puts the step cover out or in. Down here is a row of switches. 